The reason it's important to know your numbers is if you don't measure it, you can't correct it. So um, if you have high blood pressure and you never check your blood pressure, you won't know it. If you have diabetes and you've never checked your glucose, you won't know it. So these are things that are important to keep track of. And as we get older and as we go through menopause, things change and so we need to reassess. Uh, well, there are a lot of numbers out there these days and so it gets a little confusing, but most people should know their blood pressure. Our goal blood pressure is 120 over 80. Uh, as you age, sometimes it ekes on up and so we want people to keep an eye on it. Uh, if you're starting to eke up into the 130s and 140s, we want to address that. Um, the goal uh, total cholesterol, we'd like it to be under 150. Um, LDL, which L stands for lousy, so LDL should be under uh, 100, 70 to 100, especially if you're a diabetic. The HDL, the happy cholesterol, H stands for happy, should be greater than 50 to 55 for women. Um, our triglycerides, we try to keep them under 150. So when you get these printouts from your doctor's office, sometimes it's a little confusing, but if you have these numbers, it'll help you uh, try to stay in focus and try to stay in line with your, um, uh, with your numbers. Another measurement that we're really focusing on now is the waist. Uh, women's waistlines should be 35 inches or less. Men's waistline should be 40 inches or less, and that means measuring it right at the middle of the waist, not under the belt. So a lot of people cheat, but we want their waistline to be under 35. And the reason for that is uh, visceral fat, which is the dangerous fat, kind of becomes its own organ. It becomes toxic and inflammatory. It inflames the system. So, uh, and that's an easy one to do. Just get a tape measure. And if you aren't sure what any other number you should keep track of, just try to keep track of that waistline. Some of the barriers uh, are fear. I think a lot of people are afraid to know what their numbers are. A lot of people are afraid to ask for help and women especially think they need to be the caretakers. They take care of their family, they take care of their husbands, they take care of everybody at work, but they don't take care of themselves. That's probably the biggest barrier for women. The knowledge is out there, the information is out there. There are magazines, there are articles, there are all kinds of information, but I think that a lot of people just don't get started. So even if you only uh, walk 10 to 15 minutes that first day. If you just get up off the couch and start, it will at least be a start. Um, I think that um, sometimes people are just so busy and they get overwhelmed and they, the labeling, you know, everybody talks about reading your labels and knowing your saturated fats and your cholesterol levels and your sugar levels and all this business. I think that it gets very confusing and, and at some point people start to feel like, well, what can I safely eat? So uh, I usually just try to talk to people about keeping their carbohydrates to a minimum, maybe you know, 60 grams or 80 grams a day and keeping their sugars to a minimum. We have so much sugar hidden in our food. If you read what is what sugar amounts are in your food, you'll be shocked. So if you can stay below say 15 grams of sugar a day, uh, that is huge. Some of the steps to take to begin your, your healthy lifestyle is to know the most common risk factors. One of those is hypertension, the other one is diabetes, the other one is tobaccoism. If you smoke, you need to stop smoking. It makes your blood thick and sludgy and causes problems like uh, heart attacks and strokes. Uh, if you don't exercise, start doing something, whatever it is. If you can't get up off your chair, you can still bounce your legs up and down, raise your arms up and down for 15 minutes a day. A lot of people have back pain or they have problems with their hips and knees, but there are still ways that you can get some aerobic exercise in. It's very important to know your family history. If you've got someone in your family under the age of 55 years old who's had a heart attack or a stroke or a sudden death, we need to know that. From our standpoint, it helps us with our history, it helps us put the pieces of the puzzle together and know your risk factors. The doctors here are very experienced and they're excellent when it comes to women's uh, health care and cardiac concerns. Uh, we work closely together in assessing the risk factors. Women's symptoms are different than men's. Uh, men oftentimes will experience a heavy chest pain or a crushing sensation. Women don't even always have pain. They sometimes just feel like they're sweating or they feel short of breath if they're walking up a flight of stairs and they can't catch their breath and it's really different than usual. Uh, or if they're having problems with dizziness. Uh, we really uh, focus on women and heart disease. I've been at Shawnee Mission for 34 years and I think this is the best hospital in Kansas City. Our programs are excellent. The physicians are excellent. We take people seriously. We, we help them uh, know their risk, 
we counsel them, and when someone comes in for that heart aware assessment, there's a lot of information that's given and uh, good guidance to where they need to go next. My name is Penny Messmer. I'm a nurse practitioner with cardiology at Shawnee Mission Medical Center.